All right, so let's just go through quickly the process of addition and subtraction. How do you round for significant figures in cases where you have to deal with addition and subtraction? Be a uh, reminder that this is a different set of rules than with multiplication and addition, but with this, we have to consider what do you do in order to make sure that your final answer is rounded correctly. Because if you plug this into the calculator, the same numbers here, you get this, but this is the actual correct rounded number. So why is this rounded to this? It's not because you round it because you feel like it that way or because it's just always three numbers. No, it has to do with the numbers that go into it. And again, it comes back to the idea that just as a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, a number that you get from a calculation is only as accurate as the numbers used to calculate it. So if you use high accuracy numbers, you should be getting a high accuracy result with many de decimal places. If you use low accuracy numbers, you should be getting a low accuracy result with fewer decimal places. So with this case here, what we're looking at is we're saying, okay, you add these numbers together and we stack them. And by the way, in order to figure out how to round it properly, you need to take this and stack the numbers up like this and then stack the answer underneath. So we're gonna say, look, we got this number, this number, and this number. And based on this being less exact, we round the final answer to look like this number. Now, the way we go about that is this. We're going to say, okay, so you got these, you stack up your numbers, you write underneath the final calculator number. Notice how they're stacked, like the whole number's all in the same place, the tens place the same place, the hundreds place the same place, etc. Uh, the reason why we do this is so that we can say, okay, I'm going to determine which number is the least exact number. And it is, this number is the least exact out of all of them. And so it determines how the final answer is rounded. You'll notice they both go to the tenths place. So because the least exact number only goes to the tenths place, the final answer can only go to the tenths place. Now, I, I, when I say that, people tend to have a, not everybody under gets that right away. And one thing that might make it a little easier to see that is this. We're going to say, hmm, we need to identify which number is least exact so that we know how to round the final answer. And the way we do that is we underline the last significant digit in each of these numbers. So if we look at this top one, the last significant digit is defined as the one you know, on that side of the number. The significant digit for this is the right, so that's the last significant digit for that number. The middle number, that's the last significant digit. And this number, this is the last significant digit. So we're gonna say the least exact number has its final significant digit furthest to the left. You'll notice this last significant digit is farther left than either of the other two. So la least exact number has last significant figure farthest to the left. There, I put it in writing just to kind of help the idea sink in. Um, with this, we can say that this is the least exact number, which means all rounding happens in the same decimal place occupied by the last sig fig of that least exact number. So that's why I draw that arrow here because this is the place where the rounding will occur at that zero. This will be the last number of my rounded number because it's next to a two, it does not get rounded up. So that is why 30.0 becomes the final answer. In looking at a couple other examples, let's see, oh, here we go. Oh, oops, the clicker, there we go. Uh, all right, I'll set that aside. Here's two numbers that give the exact same answer in the calculator, but because this arrow is pointing to the one little thing that's a difference, that decimal place means that although the calculator would give the same answer for both of these examples, the final rounded answer would be different between these. So we need to apply the same rules here. You, the viewer, I would say this is a good time, pause the video and work these out yourselves, identify which is the least exact number and round based on it and then play the continue playing the video to see if what I do matches what you did. So top one, last significant digit is not here. These are not significant numbers. This is the last significant digit and this is a last significant digit. Here on the other hand, that decimal place means that the last sig fig is here and the bottom number is unchanged. Because if it's not a zero, it's, it's always a significant figure. If it is a zero, then it depends. No decimal, 
trailing zeros are not significant figures. So this means that top number is less exact because it's last sig figures furthest to the left. So I do my rounding here for this number. And here, this is the less exact number, top number again, but the rounding is instead at this place. You'll notice that they're going to be rounded differently. Here, the rounded number would be 2, 2, 3, 0, 0. I'll put a comma there to make it extra obvious. Here it's 2, 2, 2, 8, 8. Comma to make it obvious. And then, of course, scientific notation is required for any number greater than or equal, greater than or equal to 1,000. And non-significant zeros do not appear in scientific notation, so that becomes 2.23 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4 power. And here, it's 2.2288 times 10 to the 4th power. And I'll do as should always be done, box the final answer. All right, so this is, like I said, a good example of Changing which numbers are significant changes how you round off the answer. Essentially what we're saying is this is telling us that this number is more accurate than this number, which means it's correct to have a more accurate final answer for that second one compared to this first one right here. So uh, given those, I think um, further on in this notes, and oh yeah, there's the same kind of thing, further on in this notes, that. There's these examples, these work the same way. I suppose if I was to go through any of these, um, this first one works exactly what was on the previous slide. Those last couple work exactly like what was on the previous slide. This works like this previous slide also, but I think I might as well run through it real quickly anyway, just because it's a smaller number and I haven't done really any examples of those. So zero point, you gotta stack them all up just the same. Two, three, four zeros. One, two, three, four zeros. Zero point zero zero four. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros. And we are adding them up to get an answer. Zero point zero zero four zero seven six one. As shown there. And once again, and I'll use a different color pen to make it stand out, underline the last significant figure in each number. We recognize that this is the least exact because the last sig figure is furthest to the left. Do a rounding right here. So 0 0.004 and that 4 is next to a 0, so it remains a 4. And then being that the number is less than 0.1, we have to then convert that to scientific notation. It is 4 times, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 10. I'll put a 3 there, and because it's in decimal smaller than 1, you need a negative exponent. So that is your final rounded answer for that particular one, which I believe is animated onto the slide. Yeah, like that. All right, so uh, with these, this is the last bit to go over here. If you are going to deal with scientific notation, you still need to convert these to regular numbers and stack them on top of each other in order to see where they are going to have their last significant figure. It's really hard to tell just by looking at the scientific notation itself. So that means you need to take these, you can type them in your calculator, have a turn into regular numbers for you, or just do it yourself. 3.01 times 10 to the third, that's 1, 2, 3, so that's 3,010. 1.02 times 10 to the fourth, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 10,200, 1, 0, 2, 0, 0. So that's okay. I'll rewrite it uh, down here. 3,010 plus 10,200. Once again, you can see I have lined up the decimal places, the whole number, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, the ten thousands. Um, that way it's more easy to see how... Well, uh, you can calculate very easily tell you what this adds up to, but more importantly, how the digits align so that you can figure out how to do the rounding. So that's the added up answer. That's your raw calculator output. We once again underline the last significant digit, which is not here. It is here. If there's any doubt, like, look, if it's not a significant figure, it does not show up in the scientific notation. It's just one more way of proving that that zero is not significant. 
though the rules in your notes would say that this zero, that no decimal means trailing zeros are not significant. The same thing is true for here, that two is the last significant digit. Between the two of these, clearly the bottom number is less exact because the last significant digit is furthest to the left. So we round right there, giving a rounded version of uh, third, one, three, two, and then that two is next to a one, so it doesn't round up, and everything falling is a zero. So that's your rounded number, and because it's over a thousand, we need to turn it into scientific notation, 1.32, right? Because these are not significant zeros, they do not appear in the scientific notation. One, two, three, four. We've got to move the decimal four times, and it's a big number, greater than, way greater than one, so that means it's a positive exponent. So this would be the final correctly rounded off answer for this one. And for any scientific notation, it's all going to work the same. Turn into regular numbers, stack them up so that you can identify where your sig figs are, identify the least exact number, and figure out where to round. And uh, aside from that, I mean, pretty much everything else works basically just the same way. So that would be it.